If you want to see an absolute striking masterclass, the UFC 299 main event is not to be missed. Sean O'Malley defending his Bantamweight belt for the first time against Cheeto Vera, who is fighting for the belt for the first time. And man, I see this fight being an absolute war. Guys, welcome in to the Megan Anderson Show. Big one in the main event this weekend. The Bannerweight title is on the line when Sean O'Malley looks to defend his belt for the first time and kind of get some redemption. You know, he lost to Cheeto back in 2020, so I'm sure he's trying to get that one back. And Cheeto is looking to go 2-0 against the Sugar Show. And this time, there's a lot on the line in this rematch between these two. Now let's get into the fighter stats. Sean O'Malley coming in with a 17 and one record. He sends five foot 11 inches tall with a 72 inch reach. He's currently on a five fight win streak with that second round stoppage over Aljamain Sterling back in August of 23, which earned him the title. And he also has a split decision win over Piotr Jan in 2022. He's finished 13 of his 17 wins, nine in the first round and one by submission. Marlon Vera, 20 23, eight and one record. He stands five foot eight inches tall with a 70.5 inch reach. He's finished 14 of his 23 wins, five in the first round and seven by submission. I mean, he's fought the who's who in the Bantamweight division. Munoz, Dominic Cruz, Rob Font, Frankie Edgar, Corey Sanhagen. He has been around for a very long time. So now that the title is on the line, it will be interesting to see how he adjusts. We're going to get right into it. He's the victory for Sean O'Malley. These are the things that I'm kind of looking to see from him in this fight. The first one, disrupt the rhythm early pressure and volume and be a sniper at range. What do I mean by that? He needs to disrupt the combinations of Cheeto Vera right off the get-go. Make him hesitate. Corey Sanhagen did a really good job of identifying when Vera was about to throw and kind of almost beat him to the punch to his own combinations, which shut down a lot of that forward momentum. Vera is a guy that when he gets going, it's so incredibly hard to stop and slow him down. And when you look at the first Cheeto O'Malley fight, the feints of O'Malley were so crucial in that fight and, and forced Cheeto to hesitate, hip feigning, you know, feigning, with, with the upper body, feigning with the punches. And O'Malley already does this a lot. We also seen it very successfully in the Aljamain Sterling fight. So I think he, if he's able to get this going early and kind of disrupt that rhythm, it's gonna be really crucial because Cheeto is such a slow starter. And if Sean can use that to his advantage, win those early rounds, get ahead on the scorecard, it's gonna be so important. The second thing is pressure and volume. He needs to keep Cheeto on the back foot. Cheeto does does his best work when he is walking forward. If you shut that down, you shut down a huge part of his game and you force him to hesitate. We know that he respects Sean O'Malley's power. We've seen it firsthand in their first fight. And so for Sean, throw more volume with his hands, mix up the power so he's not just wasting energy on every shot at 100%. And he doesn't really do this anyway. When you're not able to discern whether, you know, a cross coming in your face is gonna be at 100% or at 50%, you're gonna hesitate and you're gonna have a huge reaction to every single one, which is gonna be so important, which kind of ties into the last thing is be a sniper at range. Like we know O'Malley has such phenomenal striking. He's dynamic, he's creative, he's patient, and he does his best work when he's at range, his back is off the cage, he's able to see everything and pick his opponent apart. He just needs to keep that range and do what he does best. So I think the jab and the front body kick that Sean has is gonna be really important in this fight, as well as the big feigning game to force Cheeto to hesitate, put him on the back foot, pressure him up against the cage, you know, and just combine that with patience. Cheeto is hard to put away. So the likelihood of this fight going the distance, apart from like something crazy happening, is probably pretty high. So being patient, setting up those shots and throwing volume when the openings are there are going to be so important for Sean. Win those early rounds and be a sniper at range. Keep that range. It's going to be so important for him. And I see him having a lot of success in this fight with that. Now for Vera, on the other hand, the three things I'm looking for him, start fast, target the leg, and make it a dogfight. Start faster is pretty straightforward. And if you've seen any of Marlon Vera's fights, he is very complacent with losing the early rounds, particularly in a five round fight. We know he's a marathon fighter and he's a strong finisher. However, he needs to become a strong starter. 
pause. <laughs> we know that Sean O'Malley has a high pace and volume. He's never had to keep that up over 25 minutes before. He might have that pace. He might have that cardio. He might be able to do it, but why not test that early? She don't knows he can effortlessly keep a high pace for five rounds. And we've seen that many times in a lot of his fights. Force O'Malley to adjust earlier than he's probably expecting. You force them to adapt earlier, you make them uncomfortable and they're gonna have to change the game plan right away. Because when Sean start, is the one initiating the exchanges, that is when he does his best work. So if Cheeto can force him to adjust and defend and, and try to counter more, earlier in the fight by starting faster, I think it's gonna be so, so important for him. And man, it means he doesn't give away two rounds. Who wants to give away two rounds? Anyway, the second thing, target the leg. Obviously we've got history in their first fight. Cheeto was predominantly a southpaw in that fight and he utilized the oblique kick really well against Sean. And I think it was like two minutes and 52 seconds left in the first round, which is the kick that he threw that affected O'Malley. And so whenever O'Malley switched to Southpaw, Cheeto would target that outside leg. And when you look at the Sterling fight with O'Malley, Sterling did a really good job of whenever O'Malley went Southpaw as well, he, he went to the inside leg, which forced O'Malley to switch stances, which meant that Sean wasn't able to be as varied with his striking. I wouldn't be surprised if Shido tries to do the same thing and see if he can go back to that well. And the third thing that I think is gonna be the most crucial for Marlon Vera is making it a dogfight. You cannot allow O'Malley to get going at range. Vera does some of his best work when he, he's in his range. He's making it ugly. Look at the fight with Petro Munoz. They may have thrown a couple leg kicks, but it was essentially a boxing fight in the pocket. And Cheeto's ability to move just slightly out of range in the pocket and come back to counter is phenomenal. Sean isn't gonna stand in front of him like Pedro, but if he can start early with the calf kicks, force him to stand a little more stationary instead of moving a lot and trying to keep range, I think it's gonna be really important for Cheeto. Sean can strike him going in any direction, don't get me wrong, but if you force him to have his back up at the cage, it shuts down a lot of that movement. And if you can make it ugly, it's going to kind of throw Sean off, I think. Close that range and force him to fight in a phone booth. Make it uncomfortable. He can have success. Now, betting wise, I'm leaning towards O'Malley by decision. I think O'Malley has a ton of power. I just don't see him being able to finish Cheeto. Uh, Cheeto is like, he's so hard to put away. However, don't get me wrong, Cheeto is also dangerous. So I'm probably, I, I would lean an O'Malley by decision. If you wanna lean a Cheeto by decision as well, I wouldn't be surprised at that happening. These guys are two phenomenal strikers and the crucial thing is gonna be who can put the other on the back foot early, who can make them uncomfortable and who can keep adjusting as the fight goes on. And I see this fight being so close. I will say from the first fight to now, while they both have improved, I think O'Malley has improved significantly more. Let me know who you guys are gonna be picking in the comments below. It's an interesting one in the Bantamweight division. Do you have it for Sean O'Malley or do you think it's gonna be a new for Marlon Vera? Let me know guys and I will see you in the next video.